Greetings Python coders. Once again, this is Alan D. Moore, the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python, a book that scales the steep summits of PyQt 5's learning curves with a speed that would make Edmund Hillary jealous. Available from Amazon or directly from the publisher Pact Publications. So in our last video, we used Q main window to create this cute little text editor here, pun intended. But one of the things we didn't do in this text editor was create icons. So you can see our toolbar here has text-based buttons, right? So we'd like to change that. We'd like to put icons in our application. If you Try to research this yourself. You might become a little confused uh, simply because there are so many classes in PyQt that are related to images, and it's not clear which one you should use. We've got Q Picture, Q Graphics Item, Q Graphics Object, Q Image, Q Pixmap, Q Bitmap, Q Icon. Uh, it goes on. So what are we going to use to actually put some icons in our application? That's all we want to do. Well, let me go through these classes real quick and tell you which ones we're not going to use, um, just so you kind of know what they are. And then we'll focus on how we actually add icons, and it's not terribly hard. So QPicture, first of all, is a class for capturing and replaying drawing commands. Um, not something we need just for icons, all right? Uh, QGraphics item and QGraphics object, those are part of the Qt graphics subsystem. Uh, which is kind of an advanced 2D animation thing. You can create animations, graphs, drawings. Um, uh, they're more like sprites. Definitely overkill for creating icons in an, a simple form application. QImage is getting closer. QImage is a container for raster images. Um, but QImage is optimized for editing images. We don't want to edit images here, we just want to display them. Um, that's where we get into QPixMap. QPixMap is also a raster image container, but it's optimized for display. Uh, so the difference is actually that the, the images live in your video memory as opposed to your system memory, so they're really quick and efficient at displaying. Don't have a lot of editing options, but that's fine if we just want to put some icons in our application. Uh, QBitmap is actually a special case of QPixMap for monochrome graphics. Um, we want the possibility of grayscale and color, so we're not going to use QBitmap. Finally, we get to QIcon. Um, we're going to be using QIcon and QPixMap together to put icons in our application. And I'm going to show you how those two things are related and how we use them. So let's head over to our code and let's start adding some icons. The first place we want to add an icon is here in our search widget. Okay. So I've got a few images that I have put in this folder. Uh, they're all SVG files. You can see I've got copy, cut, a gear, paste, redo, search, undo. Um, and we're going to use those vector graphics to put some images in our application. So the first thing you have to do is you have to load the image using the QPixMap class and that's part of the Qt GUI module. Okay, once we've loaded the PixMap object, um, there's a couple things we can do. First of all, we could just put that inside of a label um, and add that label. So we could say self.layout, add row, and we'll just create a queue label. We won't bother saving a reference to it. And we pass the PixMap property and give it our search image. 
All right, let's see what that looks like. You can see that put our little icon right here. What we'd probably rather have instead of just wasting space on this little image is to put it down here in the submit button. Okay, so you might think maybe on the submit button we can just say pix map equals search image. And of course that needs to exist before we can use it. Let's see if that works. Oops, forgot a comma. Now let's try it. Okay, PixMap is an unknown keyword argument. So the problem is, on any kind of an interactive widget, like a button, whether it's a push button or the toolbar buttons, we can't just pass in a PixMap. What we have to pass in is an icon. And that is going to be the Q icon class. And then we'll pass in the search image. Let's try that. Now we've got our search image there on the button. So what is the difference here? What is an icon? Why do we need to wrap our image in an icon? Seems like it's just a picture. Can we just put it there? Well, an icon is a little bit more than just a picture. An icon is actually a collection of pix maps that are each tied to a widget state. So for example, our submit button could be disabled, right? Uh, set enabled, false. We call that a widget state. It's disabled or it's enabled. And when that happens, we would like our icon to change. We want that image to change a little bit. So by default, it's going to change to a gray version of the same icon. You can see there compared to here, that icon has been grayed out. Now we can actually set our own custom image. For example, uh, maybe I want to take the gear image. And let's see, let's create an actual object here. Search icon equals qtg.q icon and we'll pass in the search image as the default. I can actually add another image to this icon. Add PixMap and what I give it is a state which is part of the Q icon class. We're going to set the state of disabled and we're going to set that to the gear image. All right, now down here we will use that icon object that we created, search icon. And let's check that out. Boop, boop, boop. Yep, got it backwards here. Actually, it's PixMap first, then state. My apologies there. Okay, now you can see when it's disabled, we have the gear. Let's actually uh, create some dynamic functionality here. Let's create a callback called check term. And if there's a term, we will set let's see, self dot submit button set enabled true else self.submit button set enabled false then we can connect We'll connect the text change signal to that function. That way, when our term is populated, our submit button will be enabled. When our term is empty, our submit button will be disabled. Let's try that out. OK, 
Okay, so there you see it's disabled. I type something in there, the icon changes. Okay. Notice I didn't have to do anything to the icon. The icon tracks the state of the widget. So when the submit button is enabled, the icon changes to its default picture. When the search button is disabled, the icon changes to its disabled picture. All right, so down here in our main application, let's go ahead and do this again. Let's add um, some icons to our toolbar. So there's a few ways we can do this. We can just say, uh, let's see, copy icon. And then we can create the pix map here. And then we would pass that as the first argument. So, oops. You know, side note here, you work with Qt long enough, you will start to forget to put those cues there because they just sort of uh, become a FNORD sort of thing. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We have our copy icon. And on a toolbar, you can't have the text and the icon, unlike a push button. It just takes the place. So we do have the tooltip if I hover it. But if you assign an icon, it's going to show the icon. If you don't, it's going to show the text. OK, so we can also just make the PixMap object. And then down here, create our actual icon. See that in action. So there we've got cut. And of course, if we uh, just want really long lines of code, we can just create it like this. There we go. So if you don't have your own image files, one thing that works on certain systems, and I believe this only works on uh, X11 systems like Linux or BSD, uh, we can actually set a theme. Set theme name. So I can call self.setThemeName on my main window and give it the name of a theme that I have installed on my system. In this case, Oxygen is one of the icon themes that I have. Then we can actually call this cutg.qicon.from theme and give it a theme name, which I believe is edit undo. Oops, sorry, this should be actually a static method on Q icon. There we go. Not on main window on Q icon. Okay, there we go. So now you can see I've got this icon that was pulled from the oxygen theme which is installed on my system. Now again, I don't think that works on Windows or Mac OS. I think that is only an X11 thing. And of course I have to have this theme installed. Now what we can do in this from theme is we can actually set a um, default in case that can't be found. So I could say undo icon g.q icon g.q pixmap undo Okay, and then I can pass that as a second argument 
to my from theme. Okay, there we go. Let's change the theme to theme that does not exist. Sorry guys, typing troubles today. All right, now you can see it can't find that, so it, it just uses the fallback, which is that one. Okay, we'll add one last one here, just for the sake of being complete. And again, I'll just do it all in one line. Redo. And we'll run that. All right, we've got all our icons. Very good. So just to review, when you want to have icons in your application, you first need to load them as QPix maps. Okay? Not Q image, not Q picture, not any of those other things, QPix map. You then have to assign your QPix map to a Q icon object. Okay? And you can assign multiple Pix maps to an icon for each different state that that icon might need to represent, whether it's normal or disabled or there are a few other states as well but those are the ones we mostly work with now before we go I want to show you a little problem here that we're gonna to have to solve in our next video and the problem is let me just run this one more time so you see we've got our icons here now I'm gonna back up a directory and I'm going to run this text editor from outside of the directory. And suddenly, look at that. We don't have any icons. Whoopsie, what happened? This is a common frustration that many people have when they first start using what we call resources in their application. In this case, these image files are uh, resources or just simply files that are not code. Um, this is only going to work if we actually launch our text editor from this directory. And that's a problem because if you're deploying this, if you're distributing it, you want people to be able to run it from wherever they happen to be. You want people to be able to click on an icon and run it, right? You don't want people to have to navigate to a certain run directory and run your application. Fortunately, PyQt has a solution for us. In the next video, we're going to talk about that. Until then, Please check the description. Please subscribe. I'll have these resources for you there. Hope your coding goes well. Hope you all learn something from this. God bless you all. Take care.